Live and direct. Right, right, right. It's Sway in the morning. Right here on Shade 45. Give it up for Dell, the funky homo sapien. <clears throat> and Sad. Kid Koala, man, how can I give you an intro that meets theirs? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> and Kid Koala is here too. Give him a round of applause. Yeah. All right. Uh, and they they formed the, the group Deltron. Now, Del, t- talk about the group Deltron 3030. Uh, Deltron 3030. It's um obviously it's me, Del, and Koala. Mm-hmm. And but by, by the way, we call Can- him Canada's number one import. Is okay, Canada's him. number one import. <laughs> He's Canada's number one import. If, uh, there you go. All right, Kid Koala. Now just go. Okay. Yeah, uh, and we you know, we we had gotten together uh, apparently 13 years ago, according to people, and, mm-hmm. and did a, dropped a record called Deltron 3030. Mm-hmm. And then we also um, I had a band called the Gorillas, and we got to together and, and the battery did Clint Eastwood and yeah. that was a number one worldwide record as well. Uh-huh. And um now we're back with um Event Two. Event. Which just came out last Monday. Yeah, yeah. Last Monday. All right. Now wow how was Event Two different from the, the debut? Um I tried to be a little bit more in depth as far as the writing was concerned. Because mm-hmm. I, I seen that a lot of fans was really, really, really into it. Mm-hmm. Like really into it. So I just wanted to make sure if you wanted to le- if you wanted to look deep into the lyrics, there's something there that you can find. Uh-huh. If you just want to enjoy it on the surface too, you can enjoy it like that too. So that's how I wanted to design it. Mm-hmm. So I had to study a lot to write it. You know what I mean? So what, what was what's the for those who don't know? What's the cause it's a conceptual project in yes. a sense. What what is the concept behind it? The concept behind it is uh, basically people went too far with their greediness and just pushed the boundaries too far until. Kind of like what's happening now. Mm. You know what I mean? A lot like what's happening now. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, what I mean? So it's kind of based upon, you know, what do people do when they're in these de- desperate situations? Mm-hmm. Are you going to rob people? Or are you going to just try to, you know, bully up on people, try to boss up on everybody? Are you going to be cool? Are you going to try to hide? What? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You can try to help people in need, whatever, you know? So that's pretty much the theme of it, just to see how people... Na- human nature is really yeah. It's yeah. about human nature responding to desperate, dire times. Mm-hmm. Actually, human nature yeah. in general. I mean, uh-huh. with desperate times. I mean, if you looked at like say the time between we made the records thirty thirty and like two thousand to now two thousand thirteen, a lot, yeah. a lot of things have happened politically mm-hmm. and otherwise that like are, are um, reflected in the future. And, mm-hmm. and actually, when it comes down to it, like Dell was saying, it's the nature of man, and the nature of man always tends to have the greed and the power mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So. Mm-hmm. It's 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 kind of more in a lot of ways is a commentary on what's going on today as well. So in broad strokes, I mean, you know, since then you had nine eleven, you had the, uh, the Occupy Wall Street, all, Occupy Wall Street. We had the banks collapsing, the collapse, the banks, the real estate collapse. Yeah, exactly. Was went on in Egypt. Uh, over, uh, yeah, exactly. The it, very importantly, through. also with with social media becoming uh-huh. a thing that where you can can control or, or start revolutions and stuff. Because uh-huh. like uh, the voice of two things happened that I thought were very significant. The voice of the people could go through like through the internet through yeah. like stuff and the other thing is like a uh, presence decide they could just declare war without asking people you know mm-hmm. what i mean and yeah. then like we're, so it's like that thin wall where you think oh we actually have a say was just kind of really you know exposed mm-hmm. okay and then um if you think about it president obama won his first election due to social media exactly, exactly. that's how powerful it's become right, uh, right yeah right. Exactly. Right. you guys talked about like uh, this project is kind of like a reflection of how people react in, in dire situations and considering the times and all the things that have happened across the globe and we've seen human behavior and the natural impulses um but some of those things seem like parallels almost uh symbolism to what's taking place in the music game as well. So is this applicable applicable to that as well? Well, once I again, I never thought about that, but go ahead, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. No, once again, nature of man, you know, and, mm-hmm. and I mean, I think if you if you take it, the, the the crisis here is obviously you know downloading and lack of sales and mm-hmm. and, and the way people act when their their checks get squeezed a little bit, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah it's yeah. nature of man comes to, comes out again. And the kind of music they they forced themselves to make to try to keep a yeah, certain yeah, yeah keeping keeping mm-hmm. up with the. Whoever had the last hit kind of the syndrome. Right, yeah. And then, you know, somebody wears a, a ch- certain chain, Cuban link chain, and then that becomes a trend, and then every rapper has to have the Cuban link chain, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just speaking off the top of my head now. No, but you're right. You know, like the trends and everything, uh, you know, right? Assimilation, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People people, people scare. Every record label is scared right now because no one has a lock on it anymore, and, and people now just... Yeah, someone successful doing something. Yeah, there's gonna be about eight or nine thousand people doing it as well. Good. They need to get their stronghold uh-huh. loosened up a bit. <laughs> for years and years, they've had their stronghold on the recording industry for so long. I'm glad 
You're glad this is here, right? Yeah, I'm uh, glad. It's, it's exciting. It's wild west fun. Right now. Now, <laughs> the, 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 the IQ level of the average uh, that's needed to um, absorb the average music today is extremely low. You don't have to think mm-hmm. as in-depth as we are having this one little conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you, or does it even matter if, you know, conceptually this album is, to me, great. You know, and I like it because it's going to trigger thought. But your average listener may not have the wherewithal to understand the message in this day and age. You know what? I, that's I kind of tried to design it so that you don't have to get that deep into it. Uh-huh. It could just sound good. And, yeah, I like the way that sounds. And, you know, I kind of get what they're saying a little bit, but I don't have to get so deep into it. Just on, if you could just you could just enjoy it for the surface. Yeah. OK, because that's the first level anyway of listening to stuff is just. How it sounds. Is, yeah. is it pleasing to your ears? That's the first level of listening to it. Mm-hmm. Anything else, you can go there if you want to. It's there. If you don't want to, that's fine too, you know? so Yeah, I mean, I think I look at it like when you um watch a TV show, like specifically like The Simpsons, where yeah. like you can watch it and it's, it's like, you know, really deep political satire or, mm-hmm. or commentary, or you can watch it because like Homer just strangled Bart and, you know, like <laughs> whatever, you know. <laughs> Man, that's a, that's a Simpson analogy right there. The automator, ladies and gentlemen, that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> I think that's the first Simpson analogy we ever had. Have oh, damn, I'm I feel sure. good. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going to open up the phone lines, 888-742-3345. Uh, we got Rob on the line. Rob, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning. What's up, Sway? What's up, Heather B? Good morning, Rob. All right, yeah. Uh, just saying what's up to Deltron, man. You dope as hell. Been following you since I was a little kid. Uh, wish you had more projects out, man. I know it's it's kind of a a, a close-knit with you, but uh, what, what you got coming out next? Um, me and Ladybug Mecca got a project called Beat and Tell Pro. It's called Beat Intellectual Project, and it's wild. So that's the, ma- that's the main thing I'm focused on next, you know? Okay, yeah. Now, how did you and Ladybug Mecca hook up, man? Um, on my album Eleventh Hour, she did the song with me on there called okay. "I Got You." Okay. So that's when we started collaborating together. Yo, uh, Mac, can you say hi? You just say, <laughs> hang in the background. Can you say hi? Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, what's up? How you been? I've been good. Give her a round of applause. You legendary now. Mm-hmm. Yo, you been busy? Yeah. Um, um, and so uh, tell your involved. Tell us about the project as much as you can. Well, um, Beat and Tell Pro is really just um, the pulse of life, the pulse of everything. Uh huh. Um, Dell is producing everything. Uh huh. Hey, hold um, on. They said that I got to do one, though. I got, uh, yeah, I get to do one. Yeah, yeah, the moderator's yeah, Dan, like, Dan, don't, Dan, don't Dan forget Dan about me. Yeah, yeah. Dan always liked to take credit for everything. No, so I didn't say I'm taking credit. I said I get to do one. Oh, you, you know? get to do one? Yeah. Okay. All right. How do you. Um, you know, you've had such success in your career, and now it's such a different time. Um, how do you feel about y- your presence as an artist in this day and era? Like, how is it for you to be in the scene today? I know you never I'm, stopped. I'm just myself, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I, uh-huh. I've always just, you know, maintained who I am throughout life. So, I mean, that that it, I evolve naturally as an artist. I evolve naturally as a person, so... Um, you know, we're just doing our thing, just doing what we love, and mm-hmm. you know, we're we're proud of what we've got so far. All right, that's what's up. Yeah. Good to see you. <laughs> Kyle's in Michigan. Kyle, good morning. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How you guys doing today? Doing all good right, morning. man. Say what's up to our panelists here. Oh man, I just want to give a shout out to all you guys. So inspirational. Um, you know, coming up, it's a little white boy <laughs> in Michigan. You guys bring the bay out here, and it's just so awesome. It's just so different from the hip hop that's out and. I just appreciate it so much. Thanks, man. Well, thank I, you. I appreciate that, man. You know, uh, Kyle, you can show your appreciation by going to iTunes and make sure you download that event, too, all right? Oh, for sure. I know. They're getting paid. They come up to Kalamazoo not oh. too long ago. I still is uh, mm. up in the globe here. I know it's a small spot, but I appreciate you coming up. All oh, right on, man. That's what's up. Uh, we got Adam from New Hampshire. Yes. What would you like to say, Adam? Hey, Dell, man. Big fan. Been following you for a long, long time. Um, all your mixtape stuff you've ever done, I totally dig everything you've done. Yeah. Um, last uh, on the last Deltron thirty thirty, you did uh, a lot of work with uh, Dan the Automator, right? Mm-hmm. On this I one mean, too. I was did he produce everything off of this album too, or mm-hmm. yep. any other producers up on there? No, it's all me. Yep. That's Dan. And that's Kid a, Koala. That's Dan the Automator right there, and yeah. Kid Koala. Nice. I was just tuning in. I didn't even realize you were in there in the studio with them. So, mm-hmm. 
All right. I'm totally digging the new stuff. I heard a lot of good stuff about it. I'm going to uh, I gotta check that out. Oh, yeah, for sure. Check that out, man. All right, Adam. We got John from Boston on the line. What you want to say? Uh, I want to say uh, love, uh, love the old city, uh, both sides of the brain. Uh, that was the shit back in the day. <laughs> I listen to that shit like uh, a fucking repeat, uh, song after song, back in like oh four, oh five, in that Gorilla City, Clint, uh, that single Clint Eastwood. Like nobody even knows that uh, <laughs> you did the uh, you did the lyrics on that shit, and uh, some sick ass shit I've heard <laughs> over the years from you, Dell. Dell's just <laughs> nodding. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, thanks for your call, Imani. What do you want to ask him? I just want to ask them, like, what flavor they on, Del Soul, or what's, what's they kick? Because, you know, they, their music sound in the 90s, like, you know, and I was just wondering what's, what's their angle. Um, music? Man, I mean, I don't know. We we just do our own thing. I mean, we've been doing our own thing for a long time, and, like, this record, it's, I don't know, it's it's kind of its own, it's, a lot, it's, it's kind of a rock and roll record in a way. It's not really like anything else that was out there. I mean... We've been making records with all those cats all along, and I'm sure they've had influences in our life. But this, this record has a lot more to do with psych rock and jazz and funk and all sorts of different things, really. Yeah, we just tried to make good music, you know what I mean? All right, Kit Koala, let me ask you, man, being a DJ, a, a very respected, skilled DJ, the DJ scene, I don't even know if you call it DJ scene anymore, kind mm. of exploded, you know, with the... Um, EDM scene and you got you know a lot of these uh, celebrity DJs that are making names for themselves now mm -hmm. uh, being a real DJ um, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> how, do, how does that the, you know some people you know they cringe at that some people embrace it some people ignore it how do, mm -hmm. how do you see the scene now as far as like the, the, the whole EDM scene, yeah, the EDM and you know the celebrity DJ celebrity DJs oh. primarily man I so, think you know what, is it a place for that Sure, I guess. Yeah. If, 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 if that's sort of the entry point for some people, that's yeah. the first thing that kids respond to is like, oh, I like the beats on them. And as they get into it deeper, yeah. just like I did when I first heard those those first hip hop records back mm -hmm. in the late 80s, eventually I started getting deeper into it. It's like, well, what, 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 did, what were these guys sampling? What were they? Uh, what he's trying to say is he started out with Hammer. Yeah, you exactly. start off with a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> right, he has some great samples in his records. So That's made, what I'm saying. Made, I'm, not, I'm not joking. I'm yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, <laughs> but that, anyways, I mean, as far as as far as I'm concerned, just uh, as far as the craft of scratching is concerned, that that hasn't changed. That's always been a really heavy subculture that people. It's it's really about if you put your time in or not. Mm -hmm. You know that y y you can tell by how kids cut whether they whether they put the time in. Whether they're yeah. fake or not, right? They can't fake it with the, when it comes mm -hmm. to cutting and scratching yeah. and transforming and whatever, whatever right? That's, that's, Blending. Or, that's the craft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're listening to Sway in the morning on Shade 45.